Have you ever wondered what a death metal album created by black metal musician sounds like? This is the album for you. Talking about the new album uh, by Blood Red Throne called Nonagon, released on January 26, 2024. I discovered this band by chance. It was three years ago. They released their album, Imperial Congregation. It was one of those albums I decided to review just by chance. There was really nothing else I recognized out at that time. And I gave it a listen. I liked it and I reviewed it. I will link that video at the end of this video. The album, Nonagon, by a Norwegian death metal band, Blood Red Throne, was released on January 26, 2024. This album marks the debut of singer uh, Sindre Watne Johnson. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. I'm going to put the text right up there on the screen. And this album was released by Soul Cellar Records. This is a Norwegian death metal band uh, formed in Christian Sand, Norway in 1998. The band was started by Daniel Dod Olaisen, former guitarist for Satyricon, and Terhe Short, Shai former basis of Emperor. Picks and uh, text on the screen because I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly. The band was inspired by bands like Death, Cannibal Corpse, and Deicide. They play death metal in a Scandinavian style, mixing old school traditional uh, metal and Swedish death with groovy riffs and elements of black metal. Uh, the band has released 11 albums. Their debut album, Monument of Death, was released uh, through Hammerheart Records in 2001. The band has undergone several lineup changes over the years. But Red Throne has been active since their formation and they continue to contribute to the death metal genre. The album, known again by Blood Red Throne, has received various reviews from critics. According to Angry Metal Guy, Nonagon is a strong album and in no way a bad record. It's just not at the same level of Imperial Congregation. Typically, a killer BRT album grabs them on the first listen, but Nonagon took a while to absorb. Metal Storm describes Nonagon as a well-produced album managing to balance power and atmosphere while enabling each element to be audible in the mix. Metal Epidemic states that Blood Red Throne has returned with a solid, focused, high-energy album, albeit a little light in the originality department. This is for a death metal head, so just want to fuck shit up and headbang them. Overall, it seems that critics appreciate the album for its energy and production, even though some of it lacks a bit in originality. The album, Nonagon by Blood Red Throne, consists of nine songs. Each track represents a level of hell from Dante's Inferno. The album opens with Epitaph Inscribed. The opening track is a slow builder. The first few seconds of the song has some dissonant guitar chords and a slow, almost doom metal guitar riff. Uh, but with each change of section, they pick up the pace a little. And by the time the song is about like a quarter of a way uh, through, it alternates between fast-paced aggression and this like mid-paced death metal. It has all the elements you would expect, those like deep uh, guttural vocals, uh, fast-paced tremolo picking, and some interesting guitar solos. Utilizing these guitar squeals, overall, it's a strong opening track. O to the Obscene was an interesting track. I heard some of that later period death album influence, for example, individual thought patterns. I heard some of that influence a little bit of that progressive feel. They also had some of that straightforward death metal chugging, something you would hear on a typical Cannibal Corpse album. But the one thing that stood out on this track was different vocal styles used and the combination of those screamy black metal styles and the deeper guttural vocals that were used in the first track. So as a second track, not too bad. Speaking to Pierce was pretty straightforward. I would say similar to the track right before it, it was enjoyable. It had the two different vocal styles used and some great fast-paced drumming, and that's really all I have to say about this. The best Sculptor uh, might be one of the best songs on the album. I say it because there was something about that guitar riff that had everything you would want from a classic death metal song with the complex time changes, just the way it was executed, and they did a very good job of playing those chunky, thick, 
beefy uh, guitar riffs on the low end and in addition to the guitar solo. It was filled with melody. I just like the song, that's all I can say. Every silent plea. Uh. So we're up to track number five and about halfway through the album, pretty much this album has been pretty consistent. There were two things that stood out on this track. One was the use of the isolated guitar section in the middle. I enjoyed that part and there were a part where you can hear the bass guitar solo. Towards the second half of the album, that was very enjoyable. Track number six is Norna Gone. This is a title track. This one's pretty straightforward, I guess. I don't have much to say about it. Doesn't mean it's not good. It just means that it's they're maintaining their consistency. We're going into the second half of the album, and so far I enjoy everything I have been hearing. Now we have Split Tongue Sermon. As we get into the last three songs of the album, I have been saying it. It was a pretty straightforward, and the song continues to trend for the most part. I enjoyed the fact that they sprinkled in a few different things here and there. They threw us a few curveballs. This one example, they had a slower breakdown at one point in the end of the album. They had this demonic spoken word part. The most unique part of the song was the guitar solo where they used some strange like reverb guitar effects. I guess that's how I could describe it. But anyway, everything still sounds good. Blade Eulogy, uh, this is the penultimate track. It was good, they're bringing back that straightforward death metal. Uh, so the song uh, didn't really take any twists or turns, it just kind of gave you what you want and that's all I have to say about this. We're at the end of the uh, album and we have Flesh Rend. Uh, this last track on the album is about seven minutes long as opposed to the average song length of about four minutes. So a little longer than the other song. It gives you everything you would expect from this band and uh, from this album, it maintains that consistency that we get throughout this album. There were some cool parts, some pretty cool like bass guitar solos. Otherwise, very straightforward, but a good way to end the album. Now for my final thoughts, this is a good death metal album. That's really all I have to say about it. If you like death metal, check it out. You'll enjoy it. Every song is good. There are no skippable tracks. It's a type of album you can listen to from start to finish. It's pretty short. It's about 42 minutes long. It's not going to be topping any death metal album of the year list, but at the same time, it might make some top tens. I'm sure it'll make my uh, end of the month list, but I'll give this album an 8 out of 10. It's a band that pretty much always delivers, and that is all. Check out my review of Imperial Congregation from 2021. I will put that link right here. Please uh, like this video. It helps me with the YouTube algorithm. Please subscribe if you have not already, and I will uh, see you in the next one.